Gang, you know who's on the other end of this microphone because, hey, as irrational as I can be about our Spartans, we need a very rational and level-headed voice, and that is Sam Martin, great friend of the program. Sam, I, I guess, how are you doing? I guess we can't be too great after a 13-point loss, but overall, I guess, how are you, man? Good to see you again. I'm good. I'm great. Uh, you know, always great to to join you on this podcast, you know, talking sports at the highest level. Oh, um, sure. <laughs> Yeah, tough loss for the boys today, but I think there's still a lot to like about this team in season. But, uh, yeah. you know, today's loss, I think, kind of represented some of the problems that this team has had, despite some really good performances over the last uh, month or two. I was going to say, because before recording, you hit me with a lot of great points. And I, there's, of course, a thousand things you can take away from every single game. But what did this game do? teach you and it's funny that we're still learning stuff about this team even in late january but what what did today's lesson uh yeah. for you? so i think that there were a couple things and, and these were things that i think coming into the season were question marks for the team so one is obviously the center position and just the uncertainty yeah. coming into the season and now what we've seen is kind of inconsistent performances at that position we, we mentioned before we talked that watching this game was kind of like watching a football game where the defense can't stop the run with the front six or seven. And once Jackson Davis really got going and MSU was unable to stop him one-on-one, -on -one, Kohler had some nice moments. So I had a couple good possessions on him, but generally they weren't doing a good enough job of stopping him yeah. from getting to his right shoulder, left hand. And he was very efficient. Once they couldn't stop that, the structure broke down and we saw MSU over helping and wide open three pointers and Indiana to their credit made their shots, even on wide open ones, nine for 15 is a good clip, but yeah. you know, those were very good looks and they were bound to make some of them. So kind of like in a football game where you're stopping the run, then you overcommit your safeties and you get hit over the top yeah. of the pass, just not a whole lot you can do when you can't stop their number one option. And yeah. uh, you know, we've seen, we saw some great performances from Maddie early in the season. I still, really like him still okay. as a prospect, even as a junior a guy who just hasn't played basketball that much, but in a game like this, not able to really impose himself, you know, had a good post touch early on, but he's really only got one post move. You know, that right hand hook takes him yeah. forever to get to it. If you cut right. him off from that left shoulder, he's not a huge threat. So I thought that was kind of the big thing. Number one. And I thought thing number two was AJ Hogard, not, having sort of enough of a two point scoring game. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's had some hot shooting performances from three. He's been pretty good from the mid range uh, in this recent hot spell, but Indiana was just able to guard the pick and roll two on two, you know, either going under the screen because he's never a threat to pull up or switching and just, he wasn't able to get downhill, get to the rim. He got to the line a good amount, but only two for eight from the field. So Without him collapsing the defense, creating an advantage, you saw him only have two assists, which, again, if he's not creating that attention into the lane, mm -hmm. he can't kick out to open shooters and really make plays for others, which is obviously his strongest suit offensively. So I thought those two things were kind of Michigan State's undoing um, and represent just some of the difficulties and challenges of, of this year's basketball roster, especially without Malik Hall. Do you think that Madi is still – best being the, this team's starting center or do you think that it's time for Kohler to maybe get some run because I, I I wrestle back and forth I still think it should be Madi starting but look Jackson you know second good game in a row Madi has had more than two underwhelming games in a row or hey do you just start off just small ball once Malik Hall comes back or is Madi just so good at that opening tip that it's like hey it's, it's <laughs> hey, the hole here to start games so I, how do you get that uh, if you can get that plus one in you know, I think yep. there's a, there's a lot of reason to, to keep him in this uh, starting lineup. But um, overall, I think, you know, it would be fine. I would have no problem with going to Kohler. Um, Izzo, over the years, has definitely used that starting lineup to, to light a fire under players. Um, yeah. And I don't, you know, the thing with Sissoko is I don't see an effort problem Um in terms of his, like, he plays a beautiful drop coverage, really nice drop coverage on pick and roll. This game, you know, a player like Kohler, similar to Nick Ward in a way, where Nick Ward wasn't a great pick and roll defender, but one-on-one -on, -one on the post, he could put up a great fight. And sometimes I think that's a thing with these guys who are post scorers, is they're actually decent one-on-one -on -one defenders because they know all the moves. Um, you know, and, and Kohler did a much better job than Soko in this game 
of keeping yeah. Jackson Davis off of his preferred side. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, shake it up for sure. I, th- I think that would be fine. I'd also be fine with sticking with Maddie. I think that there's no perfect option. Like changing the rotation is not going to magically fix MSU's center position. I don't even think if they had Julius Marble on the team that would fix it. They don't. Okay. I think they're kind of just a year away from being where they need to be at that position. And that year really is just internal development of those guys, I think. I really do want to shout out Jackson Kohler and his defense as well, because that was a comparison I was starting to make too watching this game, the Jackson Kohler to Nick Ward, especially, you know, early on in both of their careers. And yeah, yeah like Jackson Kohler is working hard on defense and it's just okay now. Like but it was mm-hmm. not okay to start the season. It was on the Absolutely. wrong side of okay, but also like the Nick Ward comparisons go to his footwork. I mean, that's mm-hmm. certainly there. That was there with Nick Ward very early on. And also too, uh, kind of like Nick Ward, especially early in his career, once he gets the ball, not a lot of passing out to, to anyone else. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, look, the last two games, it was good for Jackson Kohler. You know, yeah. nine points against Indiana, did a great job against Rutgers. Yeah. So, no, this isn't the reason to bash him. It's just an observation that, like, wow, these guys are very similar, both below the rim players as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just love that comparison. I can't think of a better one for yeah. Jackson Kohler than Nick Ward, which is something I'll take now in the middle of this <laughs> freshman year. And in a game like this where MSU had stretches, obviously, where they struggled to score, to have somebody who's going to yeah. be assertive, you know, just – and that's, I think, a big thing they miss with Malik Hall, his ability yeah. to, to be assertive and just score in isolation. Um, having Kohler, who's like, you give him the 18-foot jumper, he's going up with it. You you defend him one-on-one on the post, he's being assertive and making a move. It's not He's not looking around thinking about – what he should do. There's a time where that's very helpful. And I thought, you know, in the last couple of games, it's re- looked really good. And I think that just reflects an overall increase in confidence from him. He's definitely yeah. a scorer. You know, you can tell that's been his identity as a player well before he got to MSU, but now you're starting to see him kind of come into his own. And how many times have we seen a freshman big man for Izzo Tillman, Draymond Green, you know, it, sure. they, they go on and on where they come on late in the season and then make their presence felt in the rotation into the new year and into the tournament. Another player that is coming off the bench that we have to have an uncomfortable conversation about, and it's no fun. These are college kids. They work very hard, and they're more talented than either me or you will ever be at the game of basketball. But look, like Pierre Brooks, last six games, one of 14 shooting, has not hit a three-pointer. What do you do? with him at this point because i get hey you know play him a little bit you got to get him out there maybe he shoots out of a slump but when is enough enough and also you know not just offensively but defensively nothing too sunny over there either at what point is it just like well at least jason whiten's plays defense a little bit i mean it's not like he gives you an offensive threat but yeah. Either is brooks lately what what do you do with pierre brooks in your opinion do you try to just play him out there to get him some maybe a shred of confidence. Cause I, yeah. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's another thing where like, there's not necessarily a great answer on the roster. Right yeah. Now. Um, yeah. It, you know, this, like, I think Keon Coleman could have maybe played some minutes. For hey, now. This year. hey now. Hey yeah. now. Um, you know, just in, in his ability to be athletic and get rebounds and get out of transition and stuff. But yeah, I mean, Brooks has to shoot. That's the one kind of uh, top level skill he brings. And yeah. he had two really good looks in this game in the first half, missed them both, missed a third later on. Um, you know, ball's got to go in for him to be valuable out there. Uh, yeah. He's had some bad moments defensively throughout the season. I haven't seen a ton of improvement. Um, again, not trying to criticize. It's just what I see is, is not uh, the focus and awareness on defense. He's not like, when MSU's yeah. defense, that pack line style is working well, it's uh, you know a glove with five fingers where they all have this orchestrated, interconnected movement where it's sort of like a, a press pressure man-to-man defense on the strong side and sort of a zone on the weak side. And too often he gets caught looking, you know, whether it's yeah. not being there with a closeout, not getting a hand up on a shooter, you know, getting back cut, things like that. Um, so yeah, with that said. He's, you know, this is really just his second year of playing much on the team, and I'm not going to rule him out of becoming a valuable player down the road. With that said, you look at next year's roster and what they're bringing in, there's going to be a lot more competition for minutes. Yes. But I I think you'll have better choices to make in the future at that position than the one you just outlined. But, yeah, it's, it's a tough 
season, I still, the shooting potential that he has and the shooting that he's demonstrated is worth enough to keep playing him. I don't know how many minutes he played in this game, you know, could have probably was between six and eight minutes. You know, that's about right. Unless he starts to hit shots. If he hits shots and gets going and maybe gets some confidence, then maybe you play him a little more, but uh, again, not really a great answer. Again, without Hall, if you have Hall, you can play Aikens and Hall all of your minutes at the three and, you know, Hauser and Hall all your minutes at the four and then even play some small ball lineups. But this team was thin already. And then you take away, you know, one of the the best two-way players they have. And then, of course, it's even thinner. No, yeah, no kidding. And, you know, maybe Iowa is going to be a good shot for Pierre Brooks because just the yeah. style they play, too. I mean, they've never been mistaken for a defensive team. Like, it might yeah. be a little track meaty. And at Brunson mm-hmm. Center, back at your home court, so hopefully that helps Brooks as well. But before the Iowa game, let's take a look back at the last five games because this was a stretch where five games – and mm-hmm. between each game, you had two days of rest. Three of these were on the road. Three of these were against ranked teams, Sam. And mm-hmm. three and a quarter of these games were without Malik Hall as well. Michigan State goes two and three in that stretch. Are we fine with two and three? Is that loser talk to be fine with two and three in that stretch, considering everything that was out there with the lack of rest, the lack of Malik Hall, the tough opponents? Or mm-hmm. it is being fine with two and three kind of just okay am i okay being a loser talking like this <laughs> well, I, I don't know yeah you know the old bill parcells quote you are what your record says you are they probably yeah. deserved to win two and a half games out of those five i think they've played great against purdue Izzo throughout the years has employed that same strategy we've seen again and again over the years of not doubling their monstrous post scorer and yeah. it drives fans crazy, but it always works because you look at the end of the game and the center has like 30 shots and yep. nobody else is in double figures and MSU's right there. You know, Miles Bridges hit that three a couple of years ago and MSU beat him and they got the the last bucket this year. It, the, that's the way the cookie crumbles. The Illinois game, I think, is one where they will feel that that got away from them. Um, okay. And, you know, could they have have – played a little better against Illinois. I think that they win that and they, they were definitely good enough to win that and then played great against Purdue. Sometimes chips don't go your way. They could have easily been, you know, four and one in that stretch, but yeah. as it is, they are two and three and, and that's the reality of it. I don't feel too bad. I feel like looking back a little further, you know, you draw back to basically the, the 10 games before this Indiana uh, loss MSU had played well in nine out of 10. You know, I, I include the yeah. Purdue loss as a good performance and Illinois was really their only dud they had laid. I thought things were rounding in the form and that they were looking really good. And, you know, obviously that win at Wisconsin, you know, was an excellent win. Um, and yeah. they really deserve credit for that one. Beating Michigan was an excellent performance. So I don't want to throw the good moments in the trash, but yeah, I think you're disappointed to be two and three in the last five, but you know, in context, I think it's not altogether surprising given what this team is. I mean, I think this team right now, they're number 39 on Torvik. They're about there on Ken Palm. That's kind of where they are. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're decent offense, decent defense, really only goes about six players deep when they're healthy. And, you know, unless I see better than that down the stretch, which I could, that's just about what I think this roster is unless we see some improvement. And one great thing about college sports is that big improvements can happen rapidly and things can change fast. So, you know, let's ask me again in five more games. I was going to say, I don't know, a team improving under Tom Izzo at the later weeks of the season. I, I don't remember ever seeing that, Sam. I don't know, man. Yeah, rare sight in, uh, in Central <laughs> yeah. Michigan, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we actually see that for once. Um, no, but on a real note, hey, honestly, thanks a ton for dropping by. It's always great hearing your insight. Do you have any final thoughts you want to get off your chest? Hey, do you want to talk transfer portal? Because personally, I'm fatigued talking about it. It's late January. As of now, I say this, I don't see any mm-hmm. point of talking about it anymore, but unless you have any thoughts about that to get off your chest or anything else about this team before I slam the door on you. Anything yeah, else I think just to, to quickly zoom out on the, the outlook for the team and program as a whole, I think that you know we'll see what happens the rest of the season. We'll see what happens with the decisions that Walker and Hall have to make with respect to coming back for another yeah. season. But 
the program is in a very good position. I think we've seen a lot of improvement out of AJ Hogard. We saw when he's healthy, a lot of improvement out of Malik Hall. We've seen yep. a lot of improvement out of Tyson Walker. Jaden Akins has, you know, fulfilled. I've made a couple what seemed at the time to be outrageous proclamations. One of them was that Jaden Akins will have a better college career than Amani Bates, and that one's coming true. Um, you know, and Sissoko, for all his up and down, I think is coming on in, in some ways. Kohler is coming on. There's a lot to like about this team and the recruiting class that they're going to add, you know, fears really looks like a guy who can make a difference. And as we talked oh, yeah. about having some weakness in two point scoring at the point guard position, he may solve some of those issues and the depth on the wing with Gary Norman and Cohen Carr, you know, bringing shooting and athleticism respectively. And then, you know, Booker, a big, exciting uh, big man shooting prospects to come in, maybe a little bit underdeveloped. Uh, I think the rankings on him might be a little higher. I just would encourage people to manage their expectations early on. He's going to take some time. I would agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel very happy about the place that the program is in, their chances to compete at the highest levels potentially next year. And I just enjoy watching this team, even with the struggles that they've had in the last five, I think that they play good basketball. They're a very iso -y team, and it's not been a perfect season. It's not a perfect roster, but I'm back to really enjoying basketball and watching this team compete after what I think have been a couple challenging seasons for the Hoops program. It is so silly to talk like that, right? But, like, it was a big hole that MSU was in the last two years. And for us to say, hey, it's fun to watch now, look, it wasn't going to get – flipped like that overnight but just like you said there is a positive trajectory like i, I know yeah. that this might not be a big 10 banner winning season but like it's it's Probably. trending back to the right direction whether it be recruiting style of play veteran leadership so yeah how about this to you know round off a 13 point loss recap episode we're, we're trying to bring some sunshine into people's lives here sam so without you, you gotta maybe that's you gotta live in the real out. world you know, it's yeah, you uh, know don't what? go crying to your mama because you're on your own in the real world. <laughs> I think uh, Haley Williams said that. <laughs> what a way to bring it home. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I always love having you on. I know the, the people love watching you, listening to you. So, hey, thanks a ton, man. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your week, as well as all the listeners, viewers of Lockdown Spartans. Hey, let's go. Got one game this week against Iowa. Let's go have a great week. Love you all. Go Green.